Howdy, everybody. Hopefully you had a wonderful week. I have this um, chunk of oak that I have over in my wood pile, and it's been there about a year or so since we um, had some offered to us and we cut it up. Um, I just used latex paint to cover the end grain, um, which may have slowed down the drying process, but it definitely didn't keep it from cracking. Of course, I used old paint too, but um, I started using wax, my leftover wax from my candle melts, and that seems to help a little bit better. So this piece was pretty interesting because it had um, what looked to be a branch cut off at one time. So technically it's a crotch piece, but it, the bark had healed over that where that branch used to be. So it's always really neat to find you know pieces like that that have those interesting uh, grains going on and and you can't wait to get it open and see what's going on the inside. So I had been sitting, of course, in my wood pile for a while, so the worms have just uh, devoured a lot of it, which is also really cool because at that point you can use um, those holes as a, um, you know, resin fill and, and either, you know, do just something really interesting with them. Um, in this piece I, I did. So here I'm just roughing it out and taking off the bark um, that's loose. I should have probably did that to begin with, but I guess I got excited and ahead of myself. So when those chunks fly off, they normally hit you. And <laughs> so they're not comfortable. Just make sure you try to take off whatever loose bark you possibly can. So just so you know, if you feel splatters while you're turning dry wood, it's probably one of those worms that just raked out of the holes. <laughs> it's pretty gross, but you just kind of get used to it, I guess. And it's like, uh, it's part of the job and then move on. Of course, when I was a kid, my dad used to chase us around with bugs and things like that. Of course, he made us scared of them, but then after a while, we just, you know, got used to it and... And plus, we live in Florida. There's every bug that God ever created living here. These odd-shaped cuts um, aren't too terrible to cut as long as you get um, a sort of technique down. And I've and I've learned um, because I didn't have a bandsaw uh, for the longest time, and you know, cutting with a chainsaw round was absolutely not one of my talents. <laughs> I've learned to do this scooping action, and you notice once I get up towards where the rim of the bowl would be, um, you obviously move with your body and your your gouge. So you do a scooping, and that helps to um, keep your, I guess, keep everything good and steady And as you scoop out so you don't risk getting catches. And since I've done that scooping technique, um, I've had a lot less catches and um, more efficient uh, clearing out material. So if you are having a hard time cutting those uh, odd shapes, you move your hips and kind of scoop like you would ice cream as you, um, you kind of rock into it. So it's just a tip, something I don't really pay attention to because I just um, learned to do it by doing it so it wasn't something that was told to me it was just something that I tried and, and then it started to work so <laughs> anyways here I'm just using my um, Dremel and with a spade bit sorry about the noise that's my cats um, with a spade bit drilling out the bug uh, poop is what it is because it's the dust that they have uh, left over that's a love bug on my hand this love bug season's horrible and they live behind this like powder poop. You can't blow it out. You can't um, brush it out with a bristled brush. It is literally like, you know, wood concrete poop in there. Um, some people may, and I guess depending on some certain woods and whatever worms, they're saying that they're able just to brush it out. Well, it doesn't just brush out. I have to actually drill it out. Plus I drill it out all the way down into the bowl. So if there is 
um, any that's going to be on the inside, the resin will go to the inside too. If you notice, I started using some Starbond and I'm using the black felt where the um, crotch piece branch, you know, where that bark inclusion kind of is in the crotch piece. That worked really, really well and I loved um, how it just blended in with the already black uh, pieces there. And spalted, you know, wood has black in it so it blended really well and and it worked perfect and it was thick enough consistency where it filled. Um, I did have some pretty good voids. Here I'm using denatured alcohol to wipe over the whole surface after brushing all the dust out because the water will help um, you identify if you've got it, gotten it all. Um, because once you put a finish on, if you hadn't gotten it all, it will stand out um, your, and your finish will not absorb into that bug hole stuff. So that's just a tip for you um, if you're not sure because it is hard to see sometimes where that is and where the spalting is and where the light part of the wood. So now I'm going to use uh, a moss green and I have a real fine glitter with the Harbor Freight epoxy A and B. It's a five minute epoxy. Um, depending on the temperature outside, this stuff will, um, and depending on how much you mix of it at a time, because the more you mix with any kind of resin, the more the exothermic reaction, so it's, it gets hotter faster, so it cures faster. Um, but until I do get it on there, I am playing around with it, just pushing it back in the holes, pushing it back in the holes, pushing it back in the holes, because I don't want to fill each individual hole. You know, that would just take forever, and I ain't got time for that. <laughs> so I just mather it all on, and I just keep working it until it starts, you can feel when it starts to get really sticky tacky, and then you can just you know, then it starts to set and you don't have to worry much about it. But if you pile enough on there, you'll have plenty. Um, the colors I get, I will put in the description below. Um, and the Dremel tool that I use with the extension. I think right now the Dremel tool with the extension is on sale for only 20 bucks. I know, right? Um, I did copy and paste that link for y'all to uh, go check that out if you're interested in getting a Dremel. And mine has lasted over a year. I had the Dremel brand, name brand, prior to this one, and it only lasted maybe six months, and this one's lasted over a year. I also want to mention that I've been adding the um, information about the tools that I'm using and the grinds that there are, are on my tools uh, in the videos. I'm going to try to start uh, being more informative about the stuff I use uh, for, for you guys, and I apologize for not doing that sooner, just something you don't think about until you get in to do it. Um, also, the Starbond uh, link and all the product links in the description is um, either for Amazon, my associate's account, or um, through the products, they will give you either a discount um, or I get credit for that purchase. And those clicks um, really do help me out a lot in supporting my channel and um, helping me bring new and cool creative ideas, uh, ideas to you. So I appreciate um, you utilizing those links that I provide. If they don't work, just send me a little um, message or comment and let me know that they're not working properly because I have had issues with the Amazon one. So anyways, just to let you know. As I'm going along, I'm just filling um, the cracks as I see them um, with some medium, medium uh, Starbond CA. And I love the activator because, boy, is it nice to not have to wait. <laughs> I am the most impatient person I know, and it's it's very nice to have that that glue and activator. You know, you, you know, it's it really feels like a luxury it, it, because I don't have to wait, period. So as I go, I'm just uh, making sure I touch up, especially around the rim, um, because if you, you know, you don't get those cracks kind of under control around that rim as you go, you'll um, possibly um, cause that to split and break. So since the pith was very, very close to the rim, I just um, every once in a while stop and fill it with some glue and um, act hit it with some activator and move on. 
this wood was um, pretty much dry, but for Florida, I mean, that's not saying much. I guess drier than soaking wet. <laughs> so, um, but those chips were all dry. I mean, everything felt really, really dry coming out of there. And plus my, um, I can always tell if there's moisture in the wood because the epoxy resin that I'm filling it with, the five minute epoxy will stay gummy forever. And it takes a long time for that to dry. So I didn't put the moisture meter on this wood before I started. I probably should have. Um, but anyways, it, it was pretty dry and it has been sitting on my counter for about a week or so now and it hasn't warped or moved so I'm thinking it was pretty good and dry so I'm doing the same thing on the inside just uh, getting rid of all that worm poop um, drilling it out so that way I can start to fill it on the inside as well I had a hard time deciding what color because I have my favorite colors and a lot of times I just kind of go with what I like so getting out of the box with other colors is amazingly you know harder for me than I thought it would be I mean you think oh, it just doesn't matter with the color in there it doesn't matter and, but it does because if you don't really care for the color to begin with it's hard to like the end product I guess I don't know maybe it's just me being particular or picky I don't know uh, but I really loved this moss green it's green isn't my favorite color um, but certain greens are I guess and so this moss green really um, really ended up looking good I'm glad I used it and it has a sorry I think I forgot to mention earlier it's real fine gold glitter that I got off of wish um, I tried going back and finding it again to get the link but stuff on wish is like one minute's there one minute's not so I would just go on wish.com and look at what they have as far as their crafting stuff and I just typed in fine glitter and that's one that popped up it is really really fine it's used for makeup and nails so you know maybe that is a good way to give you a hint on what to look for um, but anyways it really really made that green it pop A lot of times along with um, spalting you get punky wood so I'm using the thin CA to stiffen up those fibers so when I go back and scrape or sand it it really helps to um, fill up that punkiness As I was sanding, um, the more and more of, you know, layers of wood was peeled back. So then some of the um, worm bug holes were revealed. And instead of having to pull out the drill, then scrape those down. Because each time you scrape the wood, you can reveal a new layer of, you know, bug holes. Um, so instead of having to do that, I kind of cheated a little bit. In one spot, I just put the powder the color powder by itself in the hole and then put the medium CA and then sprayed the activator on it which worked really well and then some areas I just used the black so if that worm hole ended up being where there was a black spot and just put the black CA in there which worked awesome um, and then went back through and sanded you know spot sanded those pieces and um, so there were some areas that did get revealed and I just put some CA in there uh, to hold it together so that way my my finish would actually stick to it may have cheated or gotten lazy but the more you start sanding and drilling and scraping the more of those holes you're going to eventually reveal and it will you literally have no bowl left by the time <laughs> you get done so sometimes you get lucky and and they're few and far between that this piece is you know it's got a lot I apologize ahead of time my camera did not record um, me putting the 
finish finish on this bowl. But I did use the Axe Abrasive Paste, then the Restoring Polish, and then my OB Shine Juice. And you can see the back side of it and what it looks like. I'm sorry, my camera is just the evil twin to my other camera that decided to decide when it recorded and when it didn't want to. Um, but you'll be able to see pictures at the end of it when it's completed. So my finish was the Sanding Sealer 50-50 Shellac and Denatured Alcohol. I like that Sanding Sealer better than the, um, the Lacquer and Lacquer Thinner because it dries a lot faster. Then I used the Axe Abrasive Paste, then the Restoring Polish, and then my OB Shine Juice. And that's really my go-to finish on most pieces. I'm trying to um, slow down and start to um, get better at spraying lacquer, and I think more of it is just my patience in spraying it. It's not how I spray it, it's the time in between in which I spray it. So I get runs or um, I have to sand it, and I really want to get done with the piece. So I will uh, probably in future videos show you my I've slowed down, started to spray lacquer, and get better at it eventually. Hopefully, because I really love the lacquer and the shine finishes. So here on the bottom is, is kind of the process I went through with the rest of the bowl. Axe Abrasive Paste, um, then my Restoring Polish, or Axe, sorry, the Axe Restoring Polish, and then the OB Shine Juice. And it, it turned out beautiful. Um, and I feel like with the shellac, and the denatured alcohol as a sanding sealer, the everything builds much better even with just one coat. Um, I find I like it better. Now I, I still have not used a professional sanding sealer, like a product you can buy on the market. So all of the sanding sealers I've made from stuff. So, so that is that, y'all. Sorry about the lack of voiceover in last week's video. Um, unfortunately, I was having some editing software issues, but I'm glad to be back yakking my head off. Thank you all for watching. I really appreciate it. I uh, pray you have a wonderful weekend, and God bless.